Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, great Monday. This week is going to be a very, very big week in the... Um, NFL, of course, because we have the combine that actually starts workouts on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, of course, is all of the um, interviews and the physicals and stuff. And tomorrow, of course, and as well as today, they are all descending on Indianapolis. It's a great week to be alive and to be thinking about our Dallas Cowboys. So with that being said, without further ado, we have some other news because what's going to happen here this week, it's just turning up the lights, working on the set here, getting all the bells and whistles together uh, to make sure that we can do all the things that we do here. Um, Stephen Jones, who the thing I can say about Stephen Jones is Stephen Jones never – bullshits you he basically will tell you exactly what he's going to do jerry jones will kind of leave things out there and you know have jerry jones speak but i remember when it came to des bryant and jerry jones was basically saying you know des bryant you know he's part of the family here we love des and you know we're going to be re-signing des and this that you know you get that with jerry with him but when it comes to other players, then sometimes you don't exactly get the same uh, deal, so to speak. And this is where you wonder about Jerry Jones when he starts talking about others. You know, is this the real deal? When it came to Des Bryant with Stephen Jones, he got stone faced. And he just basically said, well, we're just going to have to see about Des Bryant. And it was basically, I knew from that moment that Des Bryant was not coming back because Stephen Jones, the, the money man, the cat boy, so to speak, he did not want him back. Did not want him back at all. And you could tell. So when he speaks, generally speaking, you can believe what he has to say. And he's already gone on board with basically saying that, we're going to be working on an extension for Dak Prescott so that way we can get some cap relief. Um, contrary to what the Dak Prescott haters are, who are already out saying, that's the worst thing that the Cowboys could do is give them Dak Prescott an extension. It's the biggest mistake that I've ever made, and yada, yada, yada. So, in other words, keep him at $49 million and not be able to put any other players on the field. Okay, that, that's, that's, of course, better. But this is exactly what Stephen Jones actually had to say. Um, and again, Stephen Jones is not one to bullshit you too much. I've got all the faith in the world. We can win this thing with Dak, Jones said Monday. I know what he's about. His leadership skills are undeniable, impeccable work ethic. Other than um, he hasn't had won some key playoff games, he's everything you want in a quarterback. From the day he walked in the door, he has won a lot of games. And we've got to get over the hump, which is true. You know, and, and people will point out and say, well, you know, th this is one of the worst years for Dak Prescott. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy. If this, let, let's say hypothetically, this really was the worst year for Dak Prescott. Okay? And, you know, you're going to have best years and you're going to have worst years. It's basically a reality. And when you think that the Cowboys took away one of his best weapons, that we had an offensive line that was in flux, that if this is only just a bad year, that he'll play better next year, especially if he doesn't break his thumb. And if you say, we're going to put a few more pieces around him to help make it easier, then by all means, you should do better. In fact... The fact that you can say that Dak Prescott had a bad season and we still beat Tampa Bay and Tom Brady in the first round of the playoffs when a season was deemed going to be a failure before it even started by the talking heads because they literally said we didn't do anything to help ourselves. When you start thinking about it, well, the Cowboys, quite frankly, did a hell of a lot better than probably what they should have.
and that if they do some of these things to help the quarterback to make his job a little easier by giving him better weapons or a better offensive line, then maybe you can win a Super Bowl. Am I crazy on that one? If in the worst year, you still were in the second round of the playoffs with lesser talent, and and by all means, the Cowboys recognize they screwed up in wide receiver. That's why they talked to Denver about Jerry Judy. That's why they talked to the Texans about Brandon Cook. That's why they entertained Odell Beckham Jr., and that's why they ended up getting T.Y. Hilton was they realized we have to help the quarterback. Quite frankly, you've got an NFL man of the year now. You've got a guy who's a veteran. You've got a guy who's well-liked in the locker room. Now it's about getting the pieces to go around him. Um, And that's the real question that has to be answered by the Cowboys. Will they, in fact, do that to take care of the team? I don't have the answer for that, but we'll definitely be talking about it more tonight uh, during our live stream coming up at 8 o'clock. I'm curious to see, with them planning on restructuring Dak Prescott's contract, um, they could easily get themselves, depending on how much of an extension they do, they can easily get about $20, $25 million of cap relief, which would get them under the salary cap and give them – you know, potentially 13 to $18 million more money to spend without doing any other moves. And then when we start talking about if they're going to release, you know, Tyron Smith or Zeke Elliott or other players, then all of a sudden the Cowboys could end up being players um, in free agency. And that's what they're going to need to do. The bottom line is they've done well drafting people, but now we just need to kind of put a little bit more icing on this cake and bring in a couple of free agents to help out. Um, And if they do that, I don't see why you don't have a chance. If Aaron Rodgers ends up retiring or going to the AFC, there's not a lot of great quarterbacks left in the NFC. And Dak Prescott is definitely one of the better ones that are there. And that is the first hurdle that you must get over when it comes to winning. All right, good people. Hope you have a good day. Good Monday. This is the calm before the big storm starts. And um, we're going to keep on working. i got some more work to do down here in the studio. And then tomorrow I'll be in working on the Red Brick House. Definitely check in over there and see the, some of the progress that we've made on that. It's actually coming a long ways. As always, I appreciate you. Peace. <laughs>